and gentlemen, it's been a day since I've posted. I po had all the footage of corn harvest back in Missouri, but I couldn't get any of it to upload, so I more or less scratched it. And, uh, well, as you can look, we'll see. We're not in Missouri no more. Nope, we are in Arkansas. The Texas-Arkansas line at our other farm. We got a beautiful CP690 here and another one over there. And two more on its way because we have to pick some cotton. Let's, let's go over to this cotton. So we made it out to the cotton field. Just look how pretty so 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 pretty but so pretty so all of this land all the way back to them trees right over there is cotton nothing but cotton and you can't use a combine to cut cotton so you gotta use one of these big boys a CP 690 John Deere cotton picker that is also a baler. What do you mean by a baler? Well, so all the cotton goes into there first. Well, the cotton goes into there first. And then it gets sucked up through these tubes into there. And when that gets full, it comes back here into this part, which this part will come up like that. But it'll come into here and it'll get wrapped in a big old bale so it's kind of like a, a a hay baler on steroids and it's really really impressive but the cotton comes into into here Ooh, camera can't well, let's find another one let's get a little bit more light on but the cotton comes in here to these spindles which these are pretty sharp and these spin in a circle and it pulls the cotton off and then the cotton whole plant goes through here then there's another section of these on the back to help clean it up so that's kind of how a cotton picker works if if the owner of the picker was here we would ask him more questions but he won't be here for another three hours which that's okay but I have not shown you guys any of the equipment we've had we have here. We got a 9250 case, a case Steiger, which we are about to trade off for hopefully an 8430. Then we got my beam planer right here. This right here is a Great Plains. Um Great Plains. It's it's a work, okay? It did have all the row units on it, but we took a lot of the row units off to make it a twin row 38. And what's that mean, Kale? Well, everything down here is on beds. You might be asking, what's a bed? Well, let's come over here to this cotton field and I'll show you what a bed is. So, this is a bed. We grow everything on this big pile of dirt right here. See how it, there's a dip right here? This is where we run our water. So the water goes through here and the crops are up here. You might be thinking, okay, that, that don't, how does that work? Well, some way, somehow it does, okay? I have not figured that one out either. But we have a bigum right over there. Our bigum, you know, let's just go over to our bed. So, this is our big and better. It doesn't look like much. At all. It's got the a blade here, a blade there, and a blade here, and a blade there. You might be wondering. Well, that don't make no beds. How does that make a bed? It does. See right down in there? This blade, that blade, throw dirt together, and then that piece right there makes the bed not get too too tall i'll throw a video in right okay now you guys just saw how a better 
works behind a tractor to make that make more sense. But that's enough talking about farm equipment stuff. I'm gonna wait till the cotton pickers get here and they start running these things out in the field because that'd be a lot cooler. So we're currently picking cotton right now. We got 20 bales on the ground. Come hop in the old Chevy and head over there. Got Sissy. What do you think, Sissy? It's beautiful, ain't it? So let's just cruise on over here. I've been flail mowing with the 8320 and the, the flail mower on the back. Get rid of all the, the cotton stems. But let's just take a quick little tour right over here. Sissy, it's hot in here. Ooh, I think he's done. I think this picker's done. That picker, right, they're still going. We got this picker. Oop. Let's pick her up too. All right, he's got it right there. another beautiful day we got the flail mower hooked on to the 8320 we're still down south got a bunch of cotton bales and I am currently going in and flail mowing everything which isn't too bad just got me a bite to eat okay we're gonna clear but let's go flail mow for a minute so I'm gonna do a pass here real quick. It's, it's pretty simple. Oh, not the camera focus. Okay. So, you just idle the tractor back and then your PTO switch. Clip that forward. And then, ah, right, right down there. We'll start to spin. You take this button, you click it forward. That lets the flail mower down. Then right here, that's how fast your PTO is spinning. So then you take that, and we're running about 950. So we're gonna have to go. And then, oh, down in here. So about 900, 950, 910, 880, somewhere about in that range, that's what we're running. And the cotton is going in little cotton plants and then when they come out there's no cotton left so that's more or less a flail mower is just taking the cotton and cutting it and making it smaller which someone planted some crooked rows up here so that's going to be fine but yeah flail mowing's pretty pretty simple um it ain't anything too hard which anyone can flail mow but look at that guy so a cotton tree is a woody plant so what we're doing right now is we're taking the cotton and we're cutting it up into small little chunks like this the whole field And then, see this cotton's been picked. And what they're going for is this right here. This is the fiber of the cotton, which has seeds in it. Here's the seeds, see if I can do it one handed. So right there, that is a cotton seed or a cotton hole. In this part, that the cotton was once in was called the bowl with locks which there's green cotton over there so let's go over there real quick. dang now that that's beautiful so well before we 
spray bull buster and everything on the cotton. The cotton will look like this, right here. And then we spray it to open up the bulls on it. Just like, see that one, it's, it's dead. But the cotton will be green like this, which this must have been some cotton that didn't get sprayed by the sprayer operator, which sprayers over there currently broke. And then these flowers here will turn into the bowls. So it goes flower, bowl, then we kill it to get the fiber, to get the bales, and then the gin, and then it gets turned into t-shirts and towels and underwear and so on and so forth. Just like this one right here, another bowl that didn't get hit. And then, ooh, that don't look good. Let's find another bowl. And I know it's on the side of each one of these. It has these little locks. And this one's a, a four lock. Right here. So four locks all the way around it. Which, you know, honestly, I'm a Missouri kid learning cotton so you guys are learning cotton with me because i don't know much about cotton but i'm gonna try my best to explain what i know about cotton and how to raise cotton if that makes any sense but see like this little guy right here that's a lot of fiber and that's how we want it when the pickers are running through the field we want them nice and fluffy like that Ooh, come back little buddy Oh, nothing's any softer. It's like 10 times softer than a cotton swab. But we're out here flail mowing right now. That flail mower is an eight row 38, which our row spacing is 38 inches. So 38 inches in between each and every row. And you might think, Kale, how do you get 38 inches? Well, earlier I said we have the better. And that better is how we get 38 inches in between each and every row. Oh, need to holler down. So the better makes the beds that the cotton gets planted on top of to make 38 inches of, of width of space in between each plant well, each row has 38 inches. And there's a cotton, some cotton bales, big old bales. They are about eight foot tall to the very, very top. They are tall and soft. That's a lot of fiber. It's a beautiful day. subsoiling slash ripping this farm right here well the disc is somewhere over over there in that dust bowl but we are going down about 10 11 inches into the ground to the hard pan and we are breaking it because this farm has not been ripped for a very long time and it really needs it because the crops the roots are going down and they're hitting that hard pan and they can't go through it so what we are doing is preventing that we are going down breaking that hard pan for however far the roots on the plants go down so the plants can hit that hard pan and go right through it but we got the disc going over here we are at a 4.4 mile an hour let me tell you, this is slow, really slow. But here in, let's see, three, four, five days, we'll be picking more cotton. We'll have more cotton ready to go. Camera's not really straight. But we'll, we should have more cotton ready to go. And I need to get turned around, so I'll be right back.